All right, so we got Rabout or Reboot. Gulliman is an absolute beast. Now, I already knew this, but it was a great video. Get hey, guys and gal. When you close your eyes and imagine which Primarchs could eviscerate you with their pinky None. and violate your remains, Gilliman none. probably isn't the first Primarch that comes to mind. Literally not. Each Primarch was designed to be equal in the way that they were given the same amount of attention and power in their creation. Well, creating a Primarch is more of an art than a science, it seems, because some Primarchs, <coughs> Sanguinius, are much better than others, <coughs> Lorgar. From a combat perspective, Primarchs like the Lion and Angron come to mind as powerhouses, whereas okay. Gilliman definitely just does not. But badassery does Isn't Gilliman just good at everything? Isn't that like he doesn't really have like any like I'm pretty sure like his like his power like his um his special power or whatever is being good at everything. It, it, was that it? Or is he like a um what do you call it? Like a jack of all trades? Is, is he that or is that somebody else that I'm talking about? Doesn't come from talent or skill. Badassery comes from pushing yourself above and beyond, surprising people with your tenacity and ferocity, and basically achieving above what is expected of you. Okay. The guardsman that stood in front of the Emperor to protect him from Horus wasn't a very good fighter. I think he was a bit of a spurg, but his actions, although led to his horrific death, were extremely badass and convinced the Emperor not to give up. Okay. When you think of Gilliman, you think of a big blue nerd who is always super stern, <laughs> a bit of a goody two-shoes who doesn't lose his cool. Well, today I'm about to rock your world, baby, and show you that Gilliman is an absolute beast and oh. makes all the naysayers that tease him all the time look like silly little monkeys. All right, let's hear it, let's hear it. If it wasn't obvious, why monkeys though? That's crazy. At this point, I'm not allowed to swear until the three minute mark of this video. Yo. Let's get into it. Yo, when shout out the major kill, man. Galaxy's cheeks, he created W monetization. <laughs> 20 demigod super soldiers using some incredibly questionable methods, including, but not limited to, wanking into a tube and then stealing power from the gods of hell. Each of his children, called Primarchs, were designed to represent one or more of his aspects. That's what he did. Yo, real quick. That's what he did, though. Bro, he didn't have a mate. He didn't, he, like, you know, he didn't have a, you know, a female. He just, you know, bro, th these are like science experiments. Bro, bro, like, there was no woman. Like, he just, he, he, bro, this man, like, he used some of the warp to, like, create some of this, bro. When I learned that, I was like, bro, are you diabolical, bro? Like, that's the only thing that I, that I judge about the Emperor. I mean, he had to make his son somehow. I mean, again, he didn't have a woman next to him. I mean, bro, when you're, like, 14 foot high and you got this glowing skin, I don't know how can you can't get a woman. Like, bro, if the Emperor can't get a girl, bro, it's bad luck for us. I'm going to be honest with you. For example, Magnus was the Emperor's thirst for knowledge and psychic prowess, Rogel Dawn was his unbreakable will, and Lorgar was his deep and regrettable taste for choir boys. Gilliman was his administration and practicality. Whilst this wasn't as exciting as Sanguinius' wings or Corvus' ability to become invisible, it was by far the most effective. So when the Gods of Chaos yeeted the baby Primarchs across the galaxy by taking advantage of the Primarch's mother's postnatal depression, Gilliman was the one who succeeded the most. By the time he was found, he'd already created a star-spanning empire. Did you hear that, Angron? A whole empire. Okay, I did not know that. I'm going to be honest with you. I did not know that. That is what Gulliman is known for. His immaculate tax returns. Everyone knows Gulliman is effective, but this isn't what this video is about. It wouldn't be a really fun video if it was titled Gulliman is Effective, Warhammer 40k Lore. His bad eye comes from the fact that despite being chosen as the administrator, he pushes himself to become a demigod of war, oh. making even the most insane berserkers of corn no fear and regularly challenging and even beating creatures significantly more powerful than he. Oh. I'm now going to go through he's like, he's and explain like Goku every a little bit. of Gilliman's that show him as the monster I want you to see him as, not just the privileged white Aryan kid that we love to tease. Oh, okay. I don't think a he lot of Gilliman's that. reputation as an administrator was from the Great Crusade. There was not much need for him to go beast mode, even though he still did it on occasion, such as okay. when he led the Ultramarines in massacring some powerful Xenos, with G-Man personally performing a gnarly fatality on their leader. It was not until the beginning of the Great Crusade that we begin to see the dark, suppressed side of Gilliman's rage, uh -oh. more or less kicking off because of Lorgar. Wait, wait, G-Man, he a crash out like that? He's a crash out? For real? Like, I knew he was strong and stuff like that. I didn't know he was like, I didn't know he had like, uh, rage behind him like that. Hmm, okay. That like creepy pedo fuck. The first moment of, oh, hey there, Robot, was when Lorgar was throwing a tanty and smashed his huge ass mace into Gilliman when Gilliman was blowing up Lorgar's favorite city because he was being too religious. Oh, snap. Instead of losing his cool or even blocking the attack, Gilliman just gets up and asks Lorgar if he's done being a bitch. Nice. 
Sometime later, when Lorga had accepted Hell as his new dad, he launched a surprise attack against the Ultramarines. Yo. Now it did take Gilliman a bit of time to realize what the fuck was going on. The thought that half the Primarchs were now evil was a strange thought indeed. As such, Gilliman was broadcasting a message that said, Yo, we are friendly. Stop shooting us, you retards. <laughs> but when he realized it wasn't an accident, he changed the message to, Lorga is a kitty fiddling fuck who needs to eat shit and die. As soon as he changed the message, Lorga gave him a call and basically gave him the old villain monologue. He said, bro, I got to pull you to the side, bro. You violated me in front of my girl, bro. Bro, my girl, bro, she don't even, bro, she don't even hug me like she used to, bro. She gave me one of those side hugs, bro. You know what you did? I'm coming for you. That's what he said. He said, yo, you, bro, you really, you really de uh, uh, e emasculated, demasculated me. You, you really made me look soft in front of my crew. That's what he said. Wow, so bro, I didn't know Gilliman was like that, bro. He's on smoke with everybody. But they act really cocky and tell the other person their entire plan for no specific reason other than to gloat. <laughs> True. During the call, Gilliman drops his cold and calm demeanor and straight up tells Lorgar that he's going to get violently sodomized to death. Lorgar replies by being a bad sport and blowing up the command bridge where Gilliman is, knocking G-Men into space without his helmet. But that's just a minor inconvenience for the giant blue daddy, as he then proceeds to run around space, screaming in the void whilst pulverizing word bearers left, right, and center in a shower of violence and death. G Man then re enters his ship and begins a counterattack. Now, generally, a Gilliman counterattack would be him sitting in a bunker giving calculated and precise orders whilst Eldar Pawn plays on a different monitor. Oh, that okay. That is more or less what Lorgar was expecting. I mean, I guess he was expecting Gilliman being blown up and thrown into space to be somewhat fatal, but this would be plan B. Gilliman instead was like, fuck this, and he went against his nature. He personally led an elite strike team from the front as they attack various heavily defended positions from in order to gain front? the upper hand in the battle. There is a scene where a bunch of word bearers, including the powerful Gal Vorbach, were guarding an important location. Gilliman pops in with a handful of ultramarines and they begin charging at the more numerous group of word bearers as they scream in rage and anger. The word bearers are so shocked that even the Galvorback feel fear. Dang. The Galvorback being demon marines. Dang, so he bro, bro, they was like, bro, we've never seen him like that. Usually he's like, you know, more calculated and like, you know, he comes with a plan and stuff like that. No, bro, he's just full crashing out. Wow, they was like, bro, we didn't know that you had crash out tendencies. That's crazy. None of them raised their guns in time, and Gilliman gets to them and begins tearing them limb from limb in a massacre. Oh! It was seriously epic and very unexpected. Like, that's something Lehman or Angron would do, as they were made to be ferocious. Brother. This new side of Gilliman allowed the Ultramarines to repel the word bearers. What should have been the destruction of the Ultramarine Legion turned into a slaughter of word bearers. I'm gonna be honest with you, yo. I kind of like this side of Gilliman. I mean... Wow, I, I, to be honest, bro, I didn't know you were like that. Okay. To an extent. Okay, G-Man. got pretty fucked hard here. Now, after this, Gilliman could and usually would have spent time regrouping and analyzing the situation, thinking about the next move and the bigger picture. But Gilliman had unleashed the beast, and all he wanted was revenge. Crashing so he put out. together the most patchwork makeshift fleet of ships that was still somewhat functional and begun chasing Lorgar, uh -oh. revenge burning in his pants. Eventually, he catches up to Lorgar, who is buddied up with Angron. They get caught because Angron and Lorgar arrived at Angron's home planet. You know, the one that he couldn't conquer. You know, because he was the only Primarch who was unable to conquer his own planet. You know, because he fucking sucks. He's garbage. Angron was He's taking booty too juice. long having a cry and messing about. Hence, the Ultramarines, led by their mightily pissed off Bros Aryan literally Overlord, booty arrived. juiced. Lorgar and Angron had their capital ships and fleets of two legions. Gilliman had a ragtag team of ships that had been thrown together at the last minute. Take a guess who ended up winning the space battle. Gilliman's forces were able to destroy Lorgar's capital ship and nearly took over Angron's via boarding. G-Man was then able to blast a hole in the trader's fleet and land on the planet where he immediately charged at Lorgar and the two fought. Yo, bro, this man's moving like, like prime Randy Orton in the WWE. This man's on full menace mode. Yo, that's crazy. And bro, to the prime, I'm guessing this is the prime runner who couldn't take over his own world, bro. You are officially booty juice. I would net, bro, if I'm a Primark, bro, I'm taking over my world in the first night that I was born, bro. 
I would say at this point, Lorgar's power level was higher. He had accepted his psychic gifts, been powered up by Chaos, and had fought against Corvus and numerous other space marines. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that, yeah. Despite this, I would say Gilliman actually came out on top. It really depends which hit you count as harder. Either G-Man's uppercut, which shattered Lorgar's sternum and crushed his ribs, or Lorgar's mace to Gilliman's face, which tore off half of it. Ooh, Even though the damage is terrible, Gilliman ate that mace hit like it was nothing. He was even and then able to hold off Angron for a time, despite that injury, being exhausted, and Angron being Angron. He only made the decision to finally fall back when Angron turned into a big ass angry demon. Uh -oh. You know, I, that's a decision I can really get behind. Uh -oh. If he had stayed, he wouldn't have been a badass, he just would have been a retard. You would have been stupid, Did yeah. I mention that Gilliam was stabbed with the same knife that was used to mortally wound, then turn Horus to chaos? And you know what Gilliam's reaction was? It was, Oi, dickhead! Don't do that. Before then... Wait, he just tanked the... Wait, 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 hold up. So the same sword that stabbed Horus that, that, that turned him into this evil menace was the same sword that stabbed Gilliman. And Gilliman was like, yo, like, ouch. For, wait, why? Really? Why is that? Punching a hole through the man who stabbed him and walking off the injury. Sometime after Walked this, it off. Gilliman is in a position where he believes the Emperor is dead and the traitors have won, as he wasn't able to receive communications from Terra due to warp spaghetti. Oh, so now he's back in Does he despair now. and go into hiding? Does he join Chaos to save himself? No. The Mad Lad sets up Imperium 2.0 and guides Sanguinius and the line to him to Bro, prepare so to I'll make my own war against team, Chaos. Okay. Despite setting this all up, as soon as he hears that his father is alive, he ditches everything and charges back to Terra, okay. giving Sanguinius the opening to get back there in time and kind of save the day. Post heresy, Gilliman was the only Primarch that was sensible enough to administer and rebuild the Imperium, while the rest of these loyalist brothers were chasing suicidal vendettas. Looking at you, Rogel. It takes a lot of restraint and willpower not to give in to the rage and desire to seek revenge. Unfortunately, G-Man allowed himself to get outplayed and fatally wounded by Fulgrim, which is a bit embarrassing. But even then, he was still being a badass. He knew Fulgrim was the better fighter, but if only he could hold a Fulgrim for long enough, his fleet could have won the battle. Unfortunately, Bobby G didn't account for the fact that Fulgrim now had four arms and six tits, hence oh. Bobby G suffered a fatal knife wound to the neck and died. But he survived! After 10,000 years of stasis, some Eldar death voodoo combined with some mad science brought the big boy back and not a second too late. Bro, they use New Orleans, they use New Orleans voodoo on him, bro. Cause let's be honest, bro. Like a Primark getting stabbed up and him like dying, whatever, bro. We all know that man, bro. That man is coming back. Like, like they got the Dragon Balls and Warhammer. Like, let's, let's just keep it real, bro. Like a, like a Primark's not gonna stay dead for long unless you're, you know, Primark 2 and 11. They're gone forever. But bro, I didn't know. Wow. So he okay. So he got he got absolutely you know just two tapped by uh Fulcrum, and then you know he he came back. They used like I think they say he was in like a ten thousand year stasis or whatever. I don't know what that means. Uh, maybe that's like a ten thousand year coma or like rebuild or whatever. Or um I I don't know what that means. But basically like you know the, the boy's back. I'm gonna be honest with you. That's actually kind of it's kind of crazy. When Gilliman was revived, Chaos was invading his homeworld, and they were only meters away from him. You should really read the excerpt of when Gilliman was revived, it's extremely badass, and I'm going to adjust this here, but basically, once he stood up, the entire room, dozens of warriors, most of whom were insane, stopped fighting. Everyone was completely shocked, until a Cornite Berserker Leroy Jenkins himself at Gilliman was bisected for his efforts. Gilliman then takes a moment to look at his surroundings before then charging into the crowd and more or less single-handedly kills the entire Chaos army. You gotta remember that Chaos during the Heresy is very different from Chaos in 40k. Gilliman woke up with the Eldar as his allies, Space Marine sons he doesn't know, and way more gnarly Chaos Marines. To him, he was stabbed in the neck and blacked out only to wake up to an intense battle all around him, which he then absolutely rocked. Why wow, he fully just when crashed out. When he drove out. Chaos out of his home, he was tricked into putting on a Slaneshi crown. The crown was supposed to corrupt whoever wore it, but after a couple seconds, Gilliman removed it and had the Slaneshi spy arrested. After this, he entered in an absolute fiesta of a journey to Terra, where Magnus and his forces of Titsnitch were trying to fuck him every step of the way. When he finally got to the moon next to Terra, Magnus popped out and attacked him. Magnus, a massive red magic demon against our boy. 
Magnus threw a building at Gulliman, set him on fire, and was just an all-round shitty brother. Man, this same Dragon Ball Z. You talking about something he just threw? He, huh? Bro threw the he bro he threw the Trump Tower at him. Like, bro, what? In return, Gilliman was able to break Magnus's jaw, and with the help of some elder and sisters of silence, banish his brother back to the warp. Oh wow. Phew. Finally, Gilliman be home. He can have a breather. No! No, he can't! Because a fuck huge demon army of corn has rocked up and Gilliman is back to battle. He can't even get a is break. Able to lead the Imperium to victory and defeat the armies of corn. Now he can rest right? Well, maybe. But he doesn't! He completely purges terror of Xenos, mutants, and chaos cults before then reforming the Imperium and mustering the largest fleet the galaxy had ever seen for 10,000 years. With this fleet, he purges half the galaxy, delivering reinforcements everywhere he can. The Imperium went from the brink of collapse to thriving despite how many threats it faced. Gilliman only left the crusade when his other evil brother, yes, he's got a couple of those, Morty oh, we know. invaded his home. <laughs> we know. Gilliman once again stood up to and fought off his brother, despite his brother being heavily empowered by chaos. Throughout all of this, Rub Me Off Gorilla Man has been able to maintain a sense of humor. It's not a very good sense of humor, but it's the effort that counts. Dang. Gilliman isn't the strongest, fastest, or most skilled Primarch. He's not even close, yet I would say he has the most conviction and will. All the other Primarchs more or less just follow their design. Yeah, it, it does sound like that Gilliman, like, he, he's very, um, I don't know, he, he's very, like, he does have, he does have a really strong will. I'm trying to, like, see, like, what, what can I say about Gilliman? Gilliman's not, like, he's not, like, gullible. Like, he's very, like, he has his head on. I mean, yeah, cool, he is a crash out, but, bro, like, when you're the Emperor's son, bro, you are a natural born crash out. So at the end of the day, like, I mean, he, he does, like, have a will. He does have patience. I mean, bro, looking at, like, his natural instinct, stuff like that, I think, like, his natural instinct is, like, him being, uh, like, him weighing things out, him having a plan, him analyzing everything, him, you know, just, and to be honest with you, I like that a lot. That's, like, his, like, that's, like, his natural, like, way of doing things. So, I mean, to, like, comparing him to, like, all the other primers, stuff like that, I think, like, he's actually, like, the most, like, I don't know. He's kind of like a Batman in a way. Maybe I'm just like, maybe because like, you know, Batman analyzes stuff and he plans stuff and stuff like that. But to be honest with you, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, it, it, I wouldn't say he's the best, like, you know, Primark or whatever. Obviously, we all know the Silent Man is Primark. is literally the best, but that's for another day. Other than that, comment down below, man. Oh, we got, we got a minute left. We'll finish up this minute and then uh, we'll end off the video. <laughs> Gilliman is able to break from this and push himself to new heights without my becoming my a be, my be, my bad, y'all. He makes mistakes and miscalculations. He loses jewels and gets his ass kicked, but he comes back stronger every time. See, yeah, I would miss, he's very um resilient. That's the thing. It sounds like he's very resilient. That's my thing. Being a badass isn't about punching someone. It's about taking a punch, then getting back up. Yeah, I'm really hoping Gilliman is able to get his revenge against Lorgar. A scene I hope for would be where Gilliman tracks down Lorgar and beats the shit out of him, but he gets held back with psycho powers as Lorgar opens up an escape portal. Before Lorgar escapes, he mocks Gilliman. However, as he's mocking him, Corvus Corax emerges from the escape portal and impales Lorgar, holding him in place as Gilliman walks up and kills Lorgar permanently with his flaming sword. This means Corvus and Gilliman getting their revenge, and it allows Corvus to re-enter the setting. I think that would be cool. Bro celebrated too early. That man celebrated too early. He said, nah, 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 woo, woo. He was about to go into the portal and got froze, froze, froze in place. Dang. <laughs> and that does us for today, guys. Why Gilliam? Man, shout out the major kill, man. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to say his first name. Reboot, Rabout. Uh, shout out to Gilliam, man. Shout out to the shout out to the G boy, to the to the G man. And uh, comment down below, man. What do you guys think about this? Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, if you guys are new. And I will see you guys. I fix him out. And peace out, y'all.